hello good morning good afternoon or whenever you're watching this welcome back to my channel uh, i am naomi staker and i am currently in the process of cancer treatment so earlier this year i had found out that i had relapsed from diffuse large b-cell lymphoma and i had signed up for a clinical trial that started in May of 2022. Today's gonna to be a video of my past and how it all started, bring everyone up to speed on what is currently going on in my life today. Those that know me and that have followed my journey throughout this year know that I'm pretty active on social media and I share a lot of my updates whenever I can and whenever I feel led to. And earlier this year, I wanted to just be as open and transparent with a lot of things that have been going on and that happened through treatment. There's just a lot that people don't know and that just don't, um, they don't understand the investment, I think, that it takes to really take care of yourself when you're going through a huge life event like this. My hope was to be able to share my journey throughout treatment and to kind of give family and friends and people that have supported me throughout you know, the last four years a little insight of what I go through. I was very excited about this clinical trial that I was gonna be doing. On paper, it was like an exact match for my situation. A little overview of what has happened. In 2019, I was diagnosed with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Me and my husband were prepping for a powerlifting meet and it's something that he has done in the past and I really wanted to, you know, at least prep for one and try to see if that would be something that I was interested in. Well, I absolutely fell in love with just lifting heavy and seeing, you know, pushing my body to see how far it could go. And when we were prepping for this meet, I was just kept on having this knee pain, like just it after deadlift days and after squatting days, my knee would just completely swell up. The quality of my bone on the outside was fine, but then like after a few months, my bone turned into soft tissue because where the cancer attacked was my left tibia. After I was diagnosed, my tumor was about a third of my tibia. I got a MRI and then I was sent down to the University of Iowa to get treatment. At first I met with a surgeon because we didn't know if it was something that could be like removed, just didn't really know what we were dealing with. And so they got a bone marrow biopsy of my left tibia, came back as diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. So something that I didn't know, you know, before going through treatment is the doctors have protocols that they follow. So it doesn't matter what your situation is, insurance forces the doctors to give you a certain type of treatment protocol. So you have to fail a few treatments to get the newest, the latest, and the greatest. And so I was instantly signed up for RCHOP every three weeks, once a day, and I would get an infusion. And we did that for about six months, I believe. We had two months off and then I had my PET scan. I was told that I was put into remission. My next scan was to be May, 2020. My husband was set to be deployed May, 2020. And so we ended up pushing up my PET scan to April. And that was literally right when the pandemic started and things were getting crazy and he couldn't even come in with me. So a lot of those appointments that I was doing, I was literally doing them by myself. I relapsed, I had to do the second line of treatment and the second line of treatment was a stem cell transplant. Got my cells harvested and they were going to be frozen. I was supposed to get a month off before my transplant to give my immune system and my body kind of a break before we like, you know, got the transplant. Within that month, I had relapsed again. September of 2020, I was able to get CAR T cell therapy. And CAR T cell therapy is where they, you harvest your stem cells once again. So I harvested them. And then the University of Iowa sent my cells to a company in California and they genetically modified them to specifically go after lymphoma. The CAR T cell therapy is the latest and greatest and it is an absolutely amazing sort of treatment. But unfortunately you have failed two protocols of treatment before you get that. It's frustrating to be a patient and kind of like get the feeling that your doctor wants to do something else, but we can't because insurance. And it's just a frustrating situation to be in. But luckily I was able to get that CAR T cell therapy in 2020 and it put me in remission for over a year. Fast forward to May, 2022, I had found a lump in my right breast and 
instantly just from my history of cancer. I made an appointment right away with my practitioner and Brianne Newberger, you are the bomb. She actually was my doctor that diagnosed me or that pushed the x-ray and MRI for my knee back in 2019. I found the lump, I met with my practitioner and then she sent me to the hospital to get a ultrasound done on it and then a mammogram because at that point we really didn't know what we were dealing with. It is also really strange to relapse from CAR-T in a different spot. Usually the cancer will come back in the same spot. I've been able to manage the mass and just be able to like kind of feel and make sure that it's not getting out of hand. After I got my PET scan in May, 2022, we were kind of discussing what treatment plans that would be able to possibly get rid of this cancer. And my doctor was actually getting ready to start a clinical trial. It is called FTX819. Those CAR T cells specifically go after a CD19 gene. So beforehand when I got CAR T was my own cells and it specifically went after lymphoma. So this time around it was specific to that CD19 gene that I came back positive for. So a little bit more specific to the type of cancer that I have and the gene that came back positive. And ideally it's a perfect match. And so we went through the first, first transplant back in May. I did outpatient chemo and then I was admitted for a week. We had to wait 29 days. I would get my PET scan and then we saw that there was no change really. And so we had the option to either start a different line of treatment or continue the same type of treatment, but maybe do it a little bit more aggressive. So I decided to repeat the treatment. I think I was admitted August 5th of 2022. I ended up doing my chemo inpatient. It just how things worked out. Three days of chemo, two days of rest, and then I got my cells. It was the exact same protocol as in May, but just with more cells. Prior to going into treatment, we were thinking that since my immune system was already weakened because of the May treatment, my immune system wouldn't override those CAR T cells and it would take better. So that's kind of what was our thought process going into it. Remember, this is a phase one clinical trial, and so there's a lot of the unknowns. They can't promise, they can't do anything, you know, they can't do that anyway, but I'm literally a science experiment, <laughs> you know? We went through that process, and today is Thursday, August 25th, and I am two, a little bit over two weeks out of the transplant, and I'm kind of just feeling like I was in the same situation back in May, like my tumor is still there, it's not going down. And so I just don't think my body is responding to this, um, which is kind of unfortunate because you spent all those time and resources, you know, all of that energy to do this and to, you know, hope for a really good outcome. I have my next PET scan on September 6th. After September 6th, we'll be able to determine what the next steps are and so right now we're just waiting that is the probably the hardest part about treatment is just the waiting period before your scan because you know it's just you dedicate so much time and effort to you know getting better into doing this type of treatment and having it fail is just like it's just very frustrating um I just feel like I'm in a very weird stage of my life right now because, you know, obviously these big life events, they change you and, you know, you just don't have the same perspective as other people. And, you know, you learn a lot about your strengths and your weaknesses during, you know, the hardest moments of your life. And I feel like I'm just kind of um, just taking my time with everything. Um, I think it's super important to be able to slow down and appreciate life. I feel like in a way we make life so difficult <laughs> as human beings. You know, it shouldn't, life should not be very hard and we make it just so ultimately hard for ourselves. <laughs> um, there's not much that I can do to speed up things of my life. Um, and it's just, so it's causing me to surrender. And I think that's one word that just keeps on being brought to my attention is just surrender. Learning to just go with the flow. But physically, I'm slowly getting my energy back 
the chemo really hit me hard in the hospital. I think that's one of my biggest takeaways actually is I'm very grateful that I was there from start to finish uh, a couple weeks ago because I don't think that I would have been able to take care of myself as good at home or if we were doing chemo outpatient. I had to start on the weekend and they can't do outpatient chemo on the weekend unless you're admitted. So I was able to just get admitted and start treatment right away on the 5th. And during that hospital stay, I didn't share anything at all. I didn't record on my camera. I didn't do anything. I just really felt the need to just rest. I never ever regret listening to what my gut is telling me, you know? It's just, it's something that, it's an, a muscle you have to exercise and you have to just kind of get used to saying yes and surrendering. Going into it, I kind of had a feeling like I really was just like 50-50, like I really hope this works and I don't know if it will. You know, it was just, I was stuck in the middle and I really couldn't reassure myself that this was gonna be it, you know? I just had to wait until the end. And sometimes I feel like the chatter, you know, between updating everyone and, you know, other people, their responses and trying to be positive. And I don't know, like I didn't hate it. You know, I wasn't like super annoyed, but I just, I couldn't, listen to it you know I, I did not want that to be the first thing that I opened up my phone and saw obviously like I want those you know positive thoughts but I just I couldn't handle other people responding and you know sharing their thoughts it's just not something that I really wanted to and so I just took it about myself to not put anything out there for people to respond to I think I am slowly balancing, like literally every <laughs> every hour of my day is balancing like, okay, am I, is this going to push me over the edge and am I gonna be super stressed out and I'm gonna be tired? Or is this gonna keep me in balance to feeling good? And it's consistently always asking yourself and checking in with yourself on how you're feeling. And is this going to push me over the edge? You know, like this morning, I love going to the gym in the morning but I knew that was not the case. I, I really wanted to record this video and I really wanted to, you know, get my house in order and stuff like that. And that was something that I wanted to do. And I was okay with sacrificing that because if I would have went to the gym this morning, I wouldn't have had the energy this afternoon to do all these things. But since I'm using that as a reward for myself, I think that's okay. You know, you have to kind of like trick yourself into you know, sticking with your habits and really checking in with yourself. And like I said before, it's just something that you have to flex and you have to practice. And that's really all it is, it's just practicing. Something that makes me feel really good is just a clean house and just tidy rooms. And so that's what I'm doing today for myself is I'm tidying my spaces up. My office is a complete wreck, <laughs> but I am, I'm doing that for myself. I'm doing really well, honestly. I'm just really quiet. <laughs> um, I'm enjoying, you know, just being at home and soaking in every minute with my dog. Seriously. I missed him so much over those two weeks. I will know more and I will share more after my scan on September 6th. I do really want to do a day in the life like self-care video for what I'm doing for myself right now, how I'm managing my stress and how I'm taking care of myself. I think it's so pivotal to really ask yourself what you need during these big life moments, you know, when you're, you know, when you're working through all of these things.